Hello everybody, my name is Andy and you're watching Scorch and Trident. Today I will be doing a Blue Yeti shock mount test. It is a homemade shock mount made by me at home. What it is, is basically a tube. Here I have a macadamia container that I have poked a few holes in, inserted nails, and used those nails to hold rubber bands in place that act as the rubber bands that hold the shock mount in place. On the top I have soft foam that is held in place by a hair elastic. Uh, it kind of acts as a windscreen shock mount and I think it also slightly cancels out a bit of the computer fan noise that I have. The entire thing is sitting on top of a hard foam uh, stand that used to be that uh, my power supply came in and this serves a dual purpose one as a noise isolator in in a uh, conjunction with my shock mount and two it also makes sure that the mic is close enough to my close enough to my mouth so that you can hear me clearly when I talk and because the Blue Yeti is a side address mic and not a top address mic, it is very important that it is on my mouth level. The test that I designed was pretty much having the mic sit at a place where it would be if I were to normally speak into it while at my computer. And about half a meter away, I have a EOS lip balm drop from a distance about 15 centimeters uh, onto my mouse mat and I feel this tests the shock mount in a way such that no shock mount would be very obvious and the difference a shock mount makes would be made very clear and so without further ado allow us to listen to the microphone without the shock mount and then the difference it makes with the shock mount. This is a test of the Blue Yeti microphone without the shock mount with the lip balm dropping from a height of about 15 centimeters. Test one. Test two. And test three. This is a test of the Blue Yeti microphone with the shock mount on top of the hard foam uh, with the microphone wrapped in soft foam uh, with the lip balm dropping from the height above 15 centimeters. Test one. Test two. And test three. And as you can tell, the shock mount modification made a great difference to the sound. And in case you thought the first one was better, allow me to show you a, a, a uh, visual representation of the side-by-side -side comparisons between shock mount and no shock mount. As you can see, the no shock mount, there was a lot of spikes in the noise that actually went off the charts and that would allow for maybe some tearing in certain places of audio. Whereas with the shock mount, the, uh, all, of the, all of the tests uh, resulted in, in sounds that were within manageable range and it canceled out a lot of the lower uh, frequencies. And so as you can see, this modified shock mount setup works extremely well. So if you want to build one by yourself, it's extremely simple. Once again, it is simply a tube that is slightly bigger than your Blue Yeti mic or any mic, really. Uh, drill a few holes into it. Remember to leave a hole at the back for the cord. 
um, put a few elastic bands through it and somehow tie, uh, somehow make it so that the mic can be attached in a way so that the mic is not in contact with the size of the tube. Uh, you can elevate it on some sort of thing. I chose this hard foam that my power supply came in and that works as an isolator and an elevator. And then you can also have some foam or some sort of windbreaker that is attached to the top of the mic pretty much by elastic band. And so like Buckley's where they say it tastes awful but it works, well this setup it looks awful but as you can see and I have proven it definitely works.